Hello everyone, how are you today? It's great to have you here. Um, the topic in this video is Makeup by Mario, or I've actually heard it said Mario as well, um, but his name is Mario Dedovanovic, and he is a very popular celebrity makeup artist. He had his rise to fame um, when he was Kim Kardashian's makeup artist, and he now has a brand at Sephora, a very popular brand. Um, I, it's been around for a couple of years, but I feel like in this past year, it's really like shot up in popularity. I've heard a lot more about it on social media. I feel like if you're spending any amount of time on TikTok, you will hear so many products recommended, and on YouTube as well. There are certain things in this line that just receive a lot of hype these days, and I actually own a lot of elements of this line too, so I thought I would do a video devoted to it. I know some products have found their way into videos kind of randomly over time through a haul or a new product try-on, but I thought it would be good to talk about them all together. Um, one thing that's really driving all this is this new eyeshadow palette. He's got a beautiful palette that I have been devoting so much of my time to over the past about week. Um, I've used it almost every day. So I've got some opinions on that. He's got some complexion things. So let's jump in. Let's talk about this brand. Let me know your opinions in the comments section. What products are standouts? What products are overrated? And yeah, I'll just kind of apply as we go. Um, the first thing I'm going to talk about, and I used this in a video months ago, this is the Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer. It says all over warming complexion tint, and I have it in light medium. I have seen a lot of people use this at, like it's a cream bronzer, but really it seems to be intended to be an all-over thing. Like my skin would be light medium, this is deeper, and you could put it all over and it really warms up the skin. And during the summer I was really enjoying this. I haven't used it in a while, but I'm going to work it into today's look. It's a creamy product, okay? Creamy, creamy. And um, I'm just going to put this on with my e.l.f. Duo Complexion Brush and we're gonna see that my skin kind of gets a little boost, not really by way of coverage, but it'll look like, you know, I just returned from vacation. I'll have kind of a glow and a little more depth to my skin. So I think it works well when you just kind of buff it in. It's a really easy to work with cream. It's not um, super stiff by any means. It actually has a decent amount of moisture in it. If you were to use this strictly as a contour and you had this shade and you're kind of like my skin tone, it would be pretty subtle. We have a contour stick that we're going to be talking about. That's one of the newer products to me, although it has been so raved about by many others. You kind of see what's happening to my skin overall. This could act like kind of a base even, almost like glowy primer for the skin, if you know what I mean. Or you could treat it as kind of a casual lightweight foundation that's just given us a little more bronziness and a little more glow. I do love the look of this on my skin. I, I really have from the get-go. And the way I would continue to finish this look is I would just apply some concealer, okay? I feel like it's just a matter of time before Mario releases a great concealer and a foundation. But until then, I'm going to use my NYX Bear With Me Concealer Serum just because I feel like this texture is going to really work nicely into the skin on top of the Soft Sculpt Skin Enhancer. So I get a little bit, just the minimal amount that can be pumped out and it's still plenty. And I'm going to go around my eye area, also around my nose. I'm not trying to undo all the nice work that the Mario product did, but at the same time, I do need some coverage today. And then I'm just going to dab this in with the same brush that I used for the All Over product. Look how easy this dabs in. And how pretty it is without even any foundation underneath, you know? Like the skin looks really natural, kind of like I woke up like this type thing. No makeup makeup. I would have to say this soft sculpt, while the texture is a little more rich, it's a cream compact product, it kind of reminds me of the overall look of the skin if you were to just go all over with, say, a Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter or the e.l.f. Halo Glow or maybe a Lumi Glotion or something like that. You know, it really is that kind of a look. It's tinting the skin somewhat. It's giving a glow. I feel like maybe the glow is a little more subtle with this where it feels like it could be so naturally occurring, okay? See how, like, convincing and skin-like everything looks right now. Man, I love the way that looks. Now I'm going to set that concealer. I don't believe Mario has any sort of setting powder yet. I'm going to use a little bit of my Wet n Wild Photo Focus Translucent here. Get some in my cap, use a little triangular sponge, or powder puff I should say, and just get in here around the under eye and really get that nicely set. 
again, I think it's a matter of time for this brand. I predict that this brand will fully eventually have every piece of the makeup puzzle. And so much of what I've tried has really been satisfying and good, I will say. So I'm hitting my T-zone with this. I've actually been a little bit oily lately. I don't know if it's the change in weather, if we've had like a little more humidity in the air. We really had some humidity when we were down in Tennessee for a couple days, but I feel it here too. And sometimes I'll look at my skin later on and be like, man, you could use some powder, Em. You could use a blot. So anyway, I'm very intentionally getting that uh, translucent powder pressed in, and then I just kind of go in and sort of dust. We call this not baking, but microwaving. So do I have the fullest coverage on my skin right now? No. But does it actually turn out to be a pretty satisfying level of coverage? It is. So now we're going to move into contouring, and I've got a couple of sticks here. One is my blush stick. This is pretty new to me. I ordered this when I ordered the eyeshadow palette. I actually ordered that stuff from Mario's website because the shadow palette was out of stock on Sephora. I believe it is back as of the time I'm shooting this video. Let me double check. Oh, no, it's back out of stock again. They just can't keep it. Seems like it's kind of the it palette right now, but I do want to entertain sort of an alternative palette idea in this video too. But this is the soft, soft, the soft sculpt shaping stick, soft sculpt shaping stick in medium. I see this raved about all the time. Um, it's a beautiful tone. This medium is great for me. I do like the ability to just kind of swipe something on. I'm even doing down here. I don't always do the jawline area, but why not? Now I have been experimenting with lots of different um, contour sticks. I will say what blends even easier than this. Now this is blending pretty well on top of, I guess, minimal powder up here in this zone and really overall lightweight makeup. Maybe I was wearing fuller coverage, thicker products last time I was trying to make this work and I felt like it was harder to blend in. But no matter what, under any conditions, the M Cosmetics sticks are still the easiest to blend in. Like they are my standard that I compare everything else to. They are pigmented, they are beautiful, they are long wearing, and they blend in like so, so easily. And then we've got liquid products like the Milani Conceal and Perfect Liquid Contour in Ginger, which is really, really nice too. But this, as you can see, it's a good tone. It's a natural tone, not too light, not too dark. Um, I'm really not struggling to blend it in, but over different things, I felt like it had more of a dry feel. It didn't blend with as much ease over, say, CoverGirl Outlast, I'm just saying. Or maybe days where I powdered more and set the whole face more fully. It didn't have quite as easy of a blend. I'm not saying I'm struggling with this at all today. I mean, I think you could watch what I did there and it seemed like it blended pretty easily, but I would say still overall reigning supreme are the M Cosmetics So Soft sticks. Now, another product I have here is the Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Perfector. This says Radiant Skin Powder, and it's just kind of like a little gradient powder that you could use in a couple different ways. We can see we have a bronzer type color down here that appears fairly matte, and then it fades up into kind of a goldeny glow and even a lighter glow that could be a highlight. And I think I'm going to use a little bit of this as well at this stage of the game. I kind of get a little mix of the middle two elements there. And I'm going to just like hit around the hairline, add maybe a little more tan and radiance back in. This is a product that kind of comes under the heading of fun to play with, but not an absolute essential for me. And a product at a lower price that you could get that would be kind of similar to this in terms of incorporating both bronzer and a little bit of glowy highlight is the Undone Beauty uh, Compact. It's really big and it has strips of product. Some are real true bronzers, but also then there's some glow as well. So I've got that bronzer color sort of reinforcing my contour here. And then I could go way up to the top and get a little glow on there. And look what happens when you just dust that on top of the cheeks, really way up there to that lightest shade. It's like a little highlight without really feeling like you're truly doing highlight. This is the product I'm talking about from Undone. This is available on Ulta. You've got those um, bronzer colors and then also the glow. Super similar concept here. You're getting even more contrast in this compact and it can really make beautiful eyeshadow too. We're getting into something that I really feel like is kind of a one of a kind color. Um, a really pretty shade in my collection. I've talked about this before. I've had it for a while. The Soft Pop Blush Stick in Razz 
Raspberry. I bought this. People were raving about these blush sticks and a lot of the more muted shades were sold out. But oh, by the way, both of these sticks have this little brush on the bottom that I don't exactly love using, but it's there and it can work. But this shade was what I ended up getting and it's so pretty and I don't really have anything just like it. Um, I can swipe it on my cheeks or I can swipe it to the brush first. Um, it is an intense shade. Like, look at this. But it's so beautiful and really fresh on the skin and every time I use it, I love it. Still, I will say it does not blend in quite as easily as the M Cosmetics sticks do, but I wouldn't say I feel like I'm struggling with it, okay? It's just a little stiffer consistency, but it's such a pretty shade. Like, it feels valuable to me in my collection. It feels like something where I just, if I want this kind of shade, this is what I go to because I don't have anything else just like it. And look how gorgeous, absolutely baby cheek you look when you're done with this. Like, oh, it is stunning. Talk about one of those products that you fall in love with again after every time you use it. You're just like, wow, that's nice, you know? The ultimate in freshness in a blush. I, I adore that shade. Tops, amazing, wonderful. Now I think Mario has a brow gel, but I'm not sure that there's a brow pencil. I don't have any brow stuff from him, so I'm gonna go ahead and just do my brows and come back. I just use my um, L'Oreal Brow Stylist Definer there and a little bit of NYX Control Freak Brow Gel. I also put on my Milani Eyeshadow Primer, and I will say Mario does have a um, Master Eye Prep and Set Kit. It's an eye primer kit in light. I have successfully used this as concealer before, but I do not love it as eye primer. I feel like I get a lot of creasing when I use this. There's two creamy shades and a powder. You spend your time doing a beautiful eyeshadow look and by midday it looks like it's collecting in the creases, so can't quite handle that. Now for the eyeshadow palette, this is his Ethereal Eyes eyeshadow palette. It says this is Mario's dream palette with 12 new signature shades and they call these suede mattes in here that offer an enhanced grip. There are some natural metallics, I think. Um, some of the these are just like standard metallics. And then these shades they're calling like glossy shimmers, a first of its kind formula um, infused with pearls coated with emollient binders to impart a reflective wet-like shine on the lids. Now I have seen some shades like this in other palettes as well that just like look downright, you know, kind of wet and glossy. I'll try to exhibit those shades in this video, but your mattes here are right down the side, these two, and these two here. So out of a 12 color palette, just over half are matte. And does anybody else feel like Mario is really trying to go soft with his line? Like when the line first came out, he was putting out like a metallic eyeshadow palette and he had his, uh, you know, very standard all matte palette, which I hear a lot of people rave about. It's beautiful. It's very brown based, but you know, it's classic. He put out a few more like real makeup artisty things, um, a lip palette that was all about mixing. And then he's kind of merged into things being more soft. You notice this is soft sculpt, soft pop. I feel like everything's about a real chic, soft vibe. And this Ethereal Eyes palette, I think, really plays off of the trend in eyeshadow right now where we're looking naturally contoured. You do have the ability to do some glitz with this, but yet it can also just give kind of a, a wet look, you know, just a difference in texture. Um, I think it's super wearable. It's super nice quality. There's a little bit of rosiness. We can go really cool. Overall, it is a basically neutral to cool palette. And another thing I've noted when I've used it, sometimes you think, well, I'm going to pop some of the shimmer on. I'm really going there with my look, so therefore I need to do some liner and maybe some lashes. I really need to, you know, dress it all up. And what I've kind of realized as I've experimented with this so much is that you can throw some shimmer on your lid and then just apply mascara and just kind of let it be and let that be kind of your fun little statement, so to speak, but it doesn't have to be super loud. So does anyone know what I'm getting at? I'm meaning like you can use some of the shimmer without feeling like it has to be a fully, like really done up to the extreme look. But this palette is $68 for a lot of really natural shades. And I'm kind of thinking through my collection, like what do I have? What's similar to this? And honestly, ColourPop Going Coconuts. This is a very popular palette. I'm sure a lot of people have it. And this came back into my mind through that video where you all talked about the products you most recommended to family and friends. And I feel like this has the same kind of like neutral vibes, light to medium to deep browns. This palette has some absolutely outstanding shimmers. And I just feel like it, you've, you've even got that rosy shade in there. I feel like the similarities are just very obvious. I'm not calling it a full dupe, but man, do I feel like it's got a ton of 
of overlap. Now this is only a nine color palette and this is a 12, but it's still, I, I feel like I could probably execute the same looks with this. So the takeaway here is I've been enjoying this Ethereal Eyes palette, but I don't feel like it's an absolute must have, okay? And it is $68 for some really natural shades, um, even though I feel like I maybe am not picking up just palette after palette that looks exactly like this, I still do also know in my soul that I have a lot of these shades throughout other palettes, if you know what I'm saying. It might not all look like this configuration as much as Going Coconuts does, but I still, these aren't uncommon shades. I'm gonna go down here to this kind of cool uh, matte taupe and just start working that in my crease. I hope you know, like I'm not trying to knock this palette. I have had great satisfaction doing some different, really pretty looks with it, but it's not the only thing in the world that can give you these looks. I love this shade though. I love this shadowy kind of color here where it's not like, oh, you've got gray eyeshadow on. No, it just looks like you've kind of created more of a natural shadow there in your crease. It's really interesting. Um, I'm gonna go up to this one here. So this is kind of like a buttery light brown and I kind of like that sometimes on the edge of whatever I've done in my crease and I feel like it blends into my skin, kind of pretty. And I have uh, used this palette a handful of times and sidestepped the shimmer entirely and just did a really pretty all matte basic eye and loved it. Up to here, this is gonna be my highlight. Mattes are really nice to work with, not generating a lot of fallout, but still managing to be super soft seeming. Okay, so I've got that going on. Then we're gonna really easily just lay down one of these darker shades in the outer corner. I kind of like to go between either this one or this one. I've also used this shimmer. This is a really standard shimmer right there, by the way. Um, that could even go in the crease. It's not one of these kind of sheer metallic, looks glossy type of colors. Um, but I'm gonna go right down here to this one, this dark kind of cool brown, just so you can see some contrast. Or maybe you can't because I'm out of focus. Patting it here outer lid. Guys, I got my own jigsaw puzzle table and it's amazing. Yeah, I do like doing puzzles, but what gets in the way of doing puzzles are kids and cats and just the need for your everyday tables that you have in your house. And this is awesome. It folds up, it folds down, it kind of holds your pieces in place. I think, I hope I find that it held my pieces in place. Um, and you can just fold it up and stow it away. It's amazing. I've got like several really nice Christmas puzzles that I plan to be working on. I'm gonna make a party of it this weekend. I think we're gonna make some margaritas and I'm gonna do my puzzle. <laughs> I know how to live it up. All right, over here, this corner is kind of like a little bit of a rosy brown, a little bit softer than what went down on the lid there. And I'm just using my Profusion Small Pointed Brush and I like to take a shade sometimes that's a little up from whatever the darkest thing was that I put on and it sort of helps it all just blend out, blend outward. I think this type of palette could be good and same with the Going Coconuts, especially if you choose to not use a ton of shimmer. It's a good kind of like eyeshadow palette for people who don't love the look of eyeshadow or just love a really done up looking eyeshadow look because these colors are so naturally shadowy and naturally occurring from the skin. You know, that's the kind of vibe they have. Okay, so I've got this sort of matte base here. One other thing I do want to show you, there is a pretty rosy color and you could find yourself, that's not the brush I want to use. I'm gonna use my wispy white brush. You could find yourself starting out in the crease with this shade as well. But I'm just using my wispy white brush and I'm taking that rose and just kind of letting it come outside the look. And I feel like I could get this exact same look with Going Coconuts because they also have this rosy color. It's maybe a little bit richer than the rose in Mario's palette, but can accomplish the same types of things. There we go. Now taking a smallish flat brush, I'm gonna go into this shade, which is the one that really feels like it's doing this glossy thing the most. So when you see it coming on at first, it looks like, oh, sparkle, sparkle, sparkle. But you start blending that and kind of like smoothing it out over 
the lid, and you can sort of see this glossy vibe that he's talking about. You could probably see it even more if I wasn't like in full lighting right here, but it's so pretty. And I don't feel like I saw a ton of fallout all over my cheeks when I've used Milani eyeshadow primer with this. It was not a good staying power day when I used the little eye prep compact, but that gives you that kind of wet look. You could take a little bit of that lightest shade on top here and, you know, kind of pop that up even more. I'm just hitting center of the lid, right kind of on the seam where the dark shade and my light shades are merging. And this is downright like looking wet, really cool. And then these shimmers down here, I feel like are just kind of like really glitzy shimmers, very look at me types of shimmers that aren't just giving a wet vibe necessarily, but just really look like your classic, very pronounced shimmers on the lid. And they're really soft too. Like I go into that gold and I feel like I've kind of like, is it creamy? Is it zhuzhing around in there? I don't know. I'm gonna take one of these browns. Let's go down here to this one like a little soft medium brown. And that can start blending here on the lower lash line. The softness you can achieve, like the soft vibe, that is where Mario really took off with his line, was the idea of softness. Like he really accomplished that. Mario has some very popular liners. I have both the Perfect Brown and the Super Black Master Pigment Pro eye pencils here. Um, I'm gonna use the brown today. A lot of people like these. There's a little brush at the one end and you can use that to kind of, you know, smoke out a wing a little bit and make it seem a little bit softer. So I'm again using this one called Perfect Brown, right? Yeah, Perfect Brown. And I'm starting way there in the inner corner and I'm hanging in tight to my lash line, as tight as I can. <laughs> and then I am going to, I've thickened my line a little bit right here at the outside and then go to that brush, which is just a really little like squared off looking small brush but yet it does work. And look, we're not doing anything big with it. We're just making it a little bit softer. Another option, you know, if you really wanted to lay down some product, you could practically like do a little wing and then drag that wing further with this little brush, which I've almost done a little bit there. So it's cool, they're neat little liners. They go on really smoothly. They don't feel quite as buttery as my Persona ones, but I do appreciate the added feature of the brush on the end. So just kind of getting a little thickened up amount of liner there and then blending up in the direction of the outer tip of my brow. Now I am going to apply some mascara and we're gonna talk about some of the different lip products. I've got my eyes totally finished off with some mascara. I did superhero mascara up top and my usual Cali Ray come hell or high water on the lower lashes. And now we're gonna talk about a few different lip formulas. One of the things Makeup by Mario has, it's a Moisture Glow Plumping Lip Serum, which I have in the shade Mauve Glow and it kind of like is a click up type thing. It's sort of like a more standard lip balm size, but a similar packaging idea to the M Cosmetics Lip Cushions or the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lips. Um, you've got a lot of product kind of transferring down at once and giving not just the look of some color, albeit maybe a sheer amount of color, but also a ton of shine. So you kind of look like you just applied a lip gloss. And this mauve shade is definitely like a your lips but better shade. I feel like I'm seeing a lot of my natural lip color through it, but just a ton of glossy like shine. And do my lips look plumper because I put this on? Like I can feel kind of a tingle happening with this. Um, it feels like more of a hot tingle than a cool buxom type of minty tingle on the lips. It's not super major, but I just feel like they look fuller by way of using something that's providing such a thick swath of moisture, like this layer of shine on top of the lips that's again, looks like 
I just put on a lip gloss, but it came from a stick. It's a cool product. I've had it on hand for a while and really haven't been super compelled to reach for it that often. And I guess I would have to say it's because it's not giving me a lot of color. Maybe if I had a shade that was giving me a more distinguishable color, I would think to pull it out more. But yeah, it's a nice product. It certainly feels nice on the lips, but it's kind of like Mario's take on the Maracuja Juicy Lips lip cushion, etc. Another type of formula that I have is the Ultra Suede Cozy Lip Cream. I got this in the pinky brown shade. And I guess I'll just go ahead and pop this on for you. It's very matte. I feel like Mario with his lip colors really caters to the people who like nudes and just soft shades a lot. The smell on this is really good. What does it smell like? Like a brand new Barbie doll? Like, I don't know. No, it's something different than that. Um, just a hint of a fruity scent in there. But you get this really matte looking nude lip that I wouldn't really advise to wear if your lips are really dry looking. I mean, that's kind of an across the board statement there for matte lips. If you have some dry patches, which I kind of do have sort of a little chapped place over here. Up close, it doesn't look amazing with this product on, although I do really like the color. It's not gonna be your longest wearing setting in stone kind of uh, liquid lip color, okay? Then, when I bought the palette and the bronzer stick, I managed to get this little set off of Mario's website. And I think this was called Mario's Lip Lift Kit, and this was in the pink nude shade. Yeah, pink nude. You get Sam in the lipstick and Hugh in the lip pencil. So I'm gonna do that look for you today. Lip pencil is fine, but like nothing to write home about. I feel like I've really cracked the code with lip pencils as far as like Revlon Color Stay. I love those. Get your Revlon Color Stay nude lip liner. If that's not right for you, then look into the Milani understatement nude lip liners. This is fine though. This pencil is working fine. A little bit dry but soft enough to do what I'm asking it to do. Okay, so I just gone and filled in my whole lips there with that shade called Hue. And then my mini lipstick here which still feels pretty substantial, honestly. This is in Sam, and it's matte. And I should probably just swatch it out for you as is. That's the color, okay? I feel like I'm getting a look really similar to that liquid lipstick that I just put on, just by way of a different formula. Even though it's matte, it still has kind of a creaminess between the lips that you can feel. I like it. I thought this was a really good value, like 20 bucks, and I felt like I came away with plenty of product. And I would call this a very classic nude lip, okay? And then it gives us a chance to play with what I think is kind of a star underrated product from Mario's line, and it's the Pro Volume Lip Glosses. These come in multiple shades, and they're really shiny, and they really do their best work as a lip topper. There's several different shades. There's a golden nude. There's a mauve nude and a rose nude. I think the mauve nude is really pretty because it does have that cool mauve -y look, but also kind of a golden shift. It can look pretty on bare lips, but it looks amazing when you top something off. So, like, just look at what this will do. Giving such a pretty dimension and shine and life suddenly to this matte nude lip. Oh, it's really fun. Because it's like at certain angles, at certain ways I catch the lips, I can see that little shift that I see in this tube where it goes a little golden or a little bit more mauve. But I think that's so pretty. I, I just love playing with this. So yeah, guys, I guess that kind of wraps up my Makeup by Mario experience here. Also, they do have something that probably deserves a lot more love. And it's giving much more like makeup artist vibes. This was sent to me like when his brand was brand new and he's got this little lip palette with a built-in mixer palette over here. Ways to completely adjust the undertone of all of these beautiful shades. Like I, I feel like I should be diving into that probably every day. I mean, I need to do more there. That's cool. I'm sorry I didn't come to you more prepared with a review on that. I just haven't used it enough. And when I was assembling all my products for the video, I had one of those, oh yeah, and there's that moments. But yeah, what do I love the most that I used? I really love my Raspberry um, Soft Pop Blush Stick because I feel like this is a really unique shade. I look just radiant every time I put it on. It really feels like somehow that shade is naturally occurring in from the cold kind of vibes. I love it. A little goes a long way. I feel like you would have that stick 
forever. Um, so I love that. I also do love the um, Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer. I never really remember the name, but it's that unique product where you can put it all over your skin and it makes you look like kind of stepped up bronziness. I really think this is a beautiful product. I love the texture and I like how I was able to use like that plus concealer and actually look like I have a finished face as far as the coverage goes. I really think he has some beautiful lip glosses that are so much fun to layer over things. Those might be like my top three. And while I have enjoyed the heck out of Ethereal Eyes and I've done some pretty looks and I'm proud of the looks that I have done, I do think you could get the going coconuts. And yeah, maybe not every shimmer is exactly the same, but you could really pull off some of the same looks. Like it's a similar vibe in terms of being neutral, not too warm, not just full of grays either. Still contains some outstanding shimmers and the pigment's really nice. But number one thing is the blush stick for me. That shade in particular, because there are many good blush sticks out there. There. I love the M Cosmetics So Soft Sticks, but that color is so fun and different and I would highly recommend it. So thank you guys for your time today. Let me know your take on Makeup by Mario. What are your absolute essentials? What have you not liked so much? Let's discuss it in the comments and I will see you guys again very soon. I love you. Bye.